Yo, what's good? Big Z here. So I made a big mistake. I have a new single that came out today. If I love somebody again, it's gonna be you. And I also have two more singles that are coming out within the next month. But my problem is I can't show you how I made them. And I can't show you how I made them because I lost all of the project files. I have backups of the last five years of music projects on all these external hard drives. But when I went to plug one of them in to show you guys how I made my new single, it was corrupted. I got this error message and I can't access any of the files on the drive. But I've learned a lot from this happening. So in this video, I want to talk about six ways you can stay organized as a music producer. These tips will not only save you when something goes wrong, like what happened to me, but they'll also make you a more efficient, faster producer, which means you'll get better in the long run. So the first tip is to keep multiple automatic backups. So what I was doing for years was doing an automatic time machine backup on external hard drives like this, which is a good thing to do. But if one of those drives fails, I'm screwed. So what I've learned to do is keep an automatic backup to the cloud too. This isn't an ad or anything, but I use Dropbox to do this. So every time a file is saved on my computer, it's automatically saved to my Dropbox account too in the cloud. And this is great because if I'm on another computer and I want to access a project, I can just go into all my logic projects and pick one of them. Even if something crazy happened, like someone broke into my studio and stole my hard drives and my computer, it wouldn't really matter because I'd still have all my projects and everything backed up to the cloud. The second tip is about organizing your drum samples. So everyone knows that you should have a folder on your computer of all your favorite drum samples and effects and sounds that you like to use in your tracks. But you can really take this one step further by setting up sampler instruments of your favorite sounds in each category. For example, say I'm working on a track and I wanted to add a build snare to it. Because I've set this up already, all I have to do is open Logic Sampler and then I'll go to Build Snares. And now I've loaded up all my favorite snares that I could use for a build up. You can do this for any type of sound to speed up your workflow. Like I have kicks in here. And it's really easy to set up. Let me show you how. So the first and most important step is to organize your favorite samples by their type in folders on your computer. But I've already done that. So say I wanted to use rim shots on a track. I'm just going to go into the rim shots folder I've organized and I'll drag this into Logic Sampler. But you can drag this into any sampler you use in whatever DAW you use. And now I have all my rim shots loaded up. And from there, I just have to go save as. So I'll save these as rim shots. And now any project I open, I can just hit this drop down menu right here and select rim shots and all those sounds will automatically come up for me. The third tip is to organize your synth presets. So whatever synths you use a lot, Go find where those presets are stored on your computer. In Serum, it's really easy. You just hit Show Serum Presets folder. Now, you've probably downloaded a ton of different preset packs over the years, a lot of which you don't even use anymore. So what you can do is go through and just delete all the folders of presets you never use. Like, even if they're factory presets that came with Serum or another synth, if you don't use them, just delete them. You can see when I'm using Serum, I only have a few of my packs here and a few other packs that I like from other sound designers. But that's pretty much it. I've deleted all the factory Serum presets that I never used. I've deleted all the old preset packs that I don't use anymore. It makes it way easier to find the sound you're looking for if you don't have to look through like a thousand different presets. The fourth tip is to save your channel strip settings. So say you have a sound that you've added some third-party plugins and effects to to make it sound better. Like this bass sound, I have some compression on there, I have some EQ on there, and I have some delay on there. If I really like this sound and I know I want to use it in some future tracks, then I should go up here and save the channel strip setting. So I can save this as punchy bass or whatever. And then next time I want to use it, I just go to this drop down menu and select punchy bass. The fifth tip is to make use of your default plugin settings. So I personally use FabFilters EQ all the time, but when you pull up the plugin, it's just a blank slate like this. Why not have a low cut filter, a high cut filter, and maybe add a couple nodes in here 
and then go to the plugin settings and hit save as default. Now, every time I open a new instance of that EQ, that setting will come up. So I can easily add a high pass filter and a low pass filter for a sound. I have these nodes already that I can move around without having to add them. It just saves a lot of time. And you can do this for literally any plugin. If you have a default setting that you wanna start at in any plugin, just save it as a default. And then every time you load it up, you can use it from that starting point. The final tip, and I love this one, is to reorganize your plugins. When I'm looking for a new plugin and I go to this drop down menu, I have all my plugins super organized. I have my favorite compressors under compression, I have my favorite deessers under deessing, my favorite delays under delay. So it's super easy to find everything I need. And whatever stock plugins or old plugins I don't use, I don't have in these folders. It's just my favorite plugins in each one of them. You can definitely do this in any DAW, but in Logic, all you have to do is go to Preferences, Plugin Manager. You can start new folders with this button right here. So I wanted to add a folder for filters. Then to drag plugins in there, I can search by manufacturer. So I can go to Sound Toys, drag in my filtering plugins I have from Sound Toys, and then hit Done. And now every time I go to this drop-down menu, my filters are down here. And you can rearrange all these folders. You can delete plugins that you don't use from these folders. They'll still be on your computer if you ever really need to access them. But if you don't use plugins very often, there's no reason to keep it in one of your go-to folders. It really helps you produce a lot faster when you don't have to search through like 100 plugins from one company when you're just trying to find one of their plugins. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you next time. Peace.